is um, a view of the back garage area and you can see on the left is all electrical batteries, inverter, switch panels, solar charge controller and then on the right we have storage storage along the top and you can see we've allowed for raceways and conduits through the trailer so in other words uh, the wire gets bundled from the various elements and goes up on the inside edge of the space and through these openings that are cut out throughout all the gables all through the trailer along the top so and those are raceways right so there's one going front to back here one going across the trailer here and one going front to back here so all the wiring is bundled very boat like you know you'll notice if you go on ships you'll see raceways with wiring and cabling we followed the same principle uh, on the trailer so uh, you see here I've outlined illustrated batteries bus bars Renogy which we didn't use actually we didn't use some of this stuff um, circuit breaker AC panel DC panel battery disconnect charge controller uh, accessory USB panel the Victron display some of this stuff we use some of the stuff we didn't use uh, but this was a concept way back when that we we outlined things so that we could move forward and become more specific as we went along um, quick quick snapshot this is what it looks like now a little bit different but very similar you know concept was there um, but the execution a few little tweaks along the way so as we scroll along you can see the rendering um, you know the panel was similar you can see the panel it's a uh, similar shape the USBs are still along in the top the uh, 12 volt panels are here on the left the 110 is there on or on the right the 110 is there on the left um, we added some things here that we didn't these circuit breakers were relocated somewhere else we changed the brand of uh, inverter to Victron and you'll you'll find out along the way uh, most of our equipment is Victron a company from the Netherlands that's uh, used in marine equipment but also uh, for solar installations of all kinds and we found it to be quite reliable so anyhow this is these are renderings of um, what our plan was this panel actually flips down so we have access to the back to the wiring um, positive and negative bus bars you can see them here with the red wire and the black wire right here so again this is a concept but you have to start somewhere right there's the spatial layout of what we're doing as far as dimensions are concerned so in other words somebody has to build this panel and they have to build it to a certain dimension and they have to make cutouts and there has to be space between you know all this stuff needs to be figured out otherwise you're kind of doing it on the fly which quite often doesn't work so um, these are the cutouts this is a layout for the cutouts right so for instance if you're not doing this and you're giving it to your cabinet maker or millwork guy he's gonna have to do this so somebody's gonna have to do this and you know he might charge a certain amount of money to do this or you could figure it out yourself on a full-scale sheet of paper and you know provide it for him it's however you got you want to do it right um, then here is the electrical diagram now this is a general big picture electrical diagram 
So you can see the batteries, you can see a, a 400 amp class T fuse, you can see a battery disconnect, positive bus bar, all the red cabling is, or all the red lines are positive, all the dash lines are negative. So you see the positive bus bar, negative bus bar. A bus bar is just a big plate with a bunch of bolts on it that it's like a common distribution point for all the all the current so the battery supplies through the disconnect to the bus bar right and then through a circuit breaker solar charge controller um, DC charger we didn't use we didn't put that in yet I don't think we will uh, the inverter another class T 400 amp fuse to the inverter uh, shore panel shore power 120 volt panel and then there's a negative bus bar which um, one of those goes to the ground and you know a line off of the positive bus bar goes to the distribution bus bar and a line off the negative goes to the distribution bus bar as well and that goes to our four panels which we showed earlier um, the first two panels were in inside for lighting and the next two panels were at the back and devices meaning powering lighting or powering appliances. Same thing with the 120, powering lighting or powering appliances or whatever, however you want to power it, right? So we did a breakdown of the, the footage we need for each gauge of wire, kind of like a takeoff based on this diagram. So you can see Four slash zero is a gray is a gauge of, of wire American wire gauge AWG. So this gauge of wire is dependent on the current that it draws and that is going through it. So you can see there's a varying uh, number or grade of wire depending on where it is. So the bigger wire is back near the battery, and it gets smaller as it goes out toward the appliances. Um, and here it is here, cable lengths. Um, there's all the breakdown of the wire. There's what it's for, quantities, lengths. And then this is a takeoff of the ends that we need. So in other words, these lug ends are very specific. The, the size of the opening here, um, it matters what size that is because the termination varies depending on whatever you're hooking it up to. And the other thing that varies is the gauge of wire. And these are all specific for each gauge of wire. So the ends are 12 and 12, 12 and 3 eighths, 3 eighths and 3 eighths, 3 eighths and 3 eighths. So basically it, you know, it's telling us what, what the ends are to all of these wires. Now, here's a takeoff of what we need for terminals, right? The lug ends, which are what these are. And you can see 3 eighths, quarter, 3 eighths, 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, wire gauge and terminal size. So you can see the different lug ends that we needed as far as an inventory for what we were doing. Same thing with disconnects. A disconnect is one of those spade things. And uh, there's either a male or a female. And depending on what you're powering, you need a certain size of those, a certain quantity, right? Uh, same thing with ring terminals. Ring terminals are the things that go on those bus bars. So that would slide over a stud, which then would have a nut that fastens down on top of it, right? So here are all those. And then you have butt connectors, which are inline wire-to-wire -wire connectors. And some of them are, you know, 10 gauge to 10 gauge or 12 gauge to 12 gauge. And some of them are actually go from 10 gauge down to 14 or down to 16 right so you can see there there's a step down butt connector which basically you get a heavier wire down to a narrower wire and that's what those are step downs and again there's your wire oops sorry there's your wire selection chart with three percent uh, critical voltage drop and ten percent non-critical voltage drop so critical voltage drop is things like um, electronics things you don't you don't need a variation in power or, or that could be a problem. Um, things that are non-critical might be uh, some lighting, 
you might not need um, 3 percent voltage drop wiring on your lighting so your wire gauge does might not have to be quite so heavy so what I'm what I our policy was don't even deal with the 10 percent make everything 3 percent in other words it's, it's a little more money and you're using 14 gauge for a 10 foot run instead of you know uh, um, like there you, there you have uh, 12 gauge for a 30 foot run of 3 percent whereas you only need 16 gauge for a 30 foot one if you want 10 percent voltage drop so use use the three percent voltage drop that way you've got heavier wire and that we even go a si two sizes bigger than that so you're safe right it's just a little note on the side um, renderings 3d renderings of the interior of the space so we could kind of understand what it would look like this is even before we ordered the trailer there's your fridge countertop countertop settee and there are, there are tambour cabinets up above there's the table uh, and there's that pedestal cabinet right there's the entry so this would be the curbside bird's eye view and this would be the street side bird's eye view so here you have a TV window window uh, waste cabinet work cabinet with a water heater underneath one water pumps under here stove sink gray water under here, furnace back in here, and then this would all be the pantry. So there's a front and back view. So you can see the tambours going along, along the clerestory or along the ceiling. And then you see the bed configuration in the flattened out position. Uh, and then you can see the table with the settees set up and the table actually anchored through this opening onto a leg and we we tried really hard to figure out the best way for that table to be anchored and we tried you know designing brackets and little hangers and and everything we've seen out there is always the table's always flimsy and it doesn't sit very well so finally we ended up figuring out a system that includes a couple of slides here, like housed slides, like a track. And this table actually slides right in here and goes all the way back. So it actually slides in another 18 inches, which gives this incredible stability, firstly. Secondly, it gives us a surface back here as well for the pass-through. So worked out really well. A single leg, which fastens into a pocket underneath the table and you'll see how that works out it it worked out really really well there's another rendering stove sink salem vent pantry spice rack microwave fridge you can see the usb right here and then these renderings are just sort of for our own information to see where and how those raceways would go in. There's some plumbing with hot water and water pump, etc. There's the furnace. This was this is for our, our use in order to spatially understand how and where things were going to go. This is all millwork. Don't want to bore you with this. It's uh, you know somebody's got to do it. It might be your cabinet maker. It might be you. Sooner or later, somebody's got to figure out the dimensions and what sizes to cut and all of the above. And we decided to do it on paper ahead of time. Um, we had the knowledge and the tools to be able to do it, so we did it. And uh, you can see the tambour here, the roll top. You know, it goes up through here and then down. The thing about a tambour, too, is you always have to figure out where it's going to exit. Because the tambour doesn't just go in from the sides. It goes in from either the front or the back. And it has to work, right? So it's interesting because the pantry tambour went in from the back. But the other tambours actually went in from the front. And you'll see that um, when we get there. There's leather 
we actually specify the leather for our settees. And we, you know, when we had the leather made, we had to provide the upholstery person with some kind of guideline as to what they were going to do, the dimensions, how it was going to be fastened. You know, if you're doing something custom like this, you know, you need to tell them what are the dimensions, what kind of foam, what's the radius, how are they fastened, you know, what leather is it, um, all of the above, right? So that, that's pretty important stuff. And um, it'll save money too, because then all of this stuff is figured out for them and they don't have to ask the question or do it themselves, right? So there's our, you know, this is the information we provided the upholstery people. We, we told them the kind of leather we wanted and basically laid things out so they, they could build it. Kind of like shop drawings. So yeah, I was talking about the tambours. Um, this is the front view right here. It's really hard to see. Let me just see if I can zoom in here. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in. There we go. Okay. So these are the upper cabinets, right? Okay, so this is the front. This is the bottom rail. This is a section through this, through it, like slicing across through it. So that would be a solid wood rail. So that would be this rail right here, right? And then you have the tambour, which is the roll top, which sits in there. And it's in a track, right? And that tambour, you want to be able to get that tambour out if there's a problem, right? So what we figured out is that we would pull the tambour out from through the bottom. So actually what we did was we put this rail right where the tambour is. So that if you want to take it out, you just take this rail off and the tambour drops right out. Simple, easy. Um, we actually installed all these cabinets before we ordered the tambour. And then we had all our dimensions. We ordered the tambour and slid them in fastened in our rail and everything was good to go. Behind the rail are those lights, those down lights we were talking about. And that little groove right there is where the strip light is that I showed you earlier. So, you know, this isn't for the uh, faint of heart. I mean, this is something your cabinet maker would do or contractor or whatever. But you, you kind of get out what you put into it. And if you want to really get a really nice job out of it, you have to put a lot of time and energy into the planning of it as well. So here we go. There's a corner cabinets. Another corner cabinet. That's that pedestal cabinet I was talking about that goes up to the ceiling. These are the switches at the entry. There's a back view through the pass-through. Um, those are butterfly vents. It's a sailing thing. So you, you open them up and air flows through and ventilation is a huge thing in a trailer. So you want to make sure you have good airflow. And that's why we have all those Salem vents and the max fans and all of the above is you need really good airflow. Cause the last thing you want to have is high humidity in some of these closed off spaces that promote mold and that's not a good thing in a, in a closed space in a trailer. We learned this all when we were living on our sailboat. We learned all this probably the hard way. Um, you know, we lived on an older sailboat that didn't have great ventilation and we realized that it needed it in a bad way. So um, we learned. These are all layouts for the millwork. There's the garage face on view. You can see the shelving over here, shelving here electrical here and that's the pass-through and this is for nerd city here this is like millwork sections through all of that stuff um, cutouts 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 there's the table single leg that's a full-scale view of the leg four inches by three inches um, solid fur that anchors itself into a pocket and there's actually a locking mechanism that keeps it in place. I'll get into that further. Uh, here's our compost toilet, which actually pulls out 
one of the doors and then there's a full uh, platform that pulls out on a heavy, heavy duty rail. It's actually ventilated to the outside. It's um, it's not the one that's shown that that's a nature's head, but we actually elected to go to airhead, which we think is a little bit better unit. Um, there's the laundry hamper that flips forward. More cutouts, and then a list: water, you know, plumbing. Here's all the plumbing stuff. Propane. Here's all the propane stuff. Electrical. Here's all the electrical stuff. Lighting, here's that. Equipment, there's that. Hardware, finishes. This is, it goes on and on, right? So I can provide links to some of this stuff, or I can later on in below video um, links, I can, I can provide links to all this stuff as well. So um, these are some more illustrations of some of the gear we've used. Um, there's a shot of the Legend trailer as it comes off the assembly line. That's not ours, but that's what it looks like. Um, those are the colors we used. We used pewter and white with an RV door. There's a pretty good view of those Salem vents. If you look closely, those are really cool. They, um, they do the job. Uh, you can open them from either end and, um, uh, they provide airflow. Uh, project schedule, that was out the window, but anyhow, regardless. Um, so 